Hallo. Hallo. Hi. I'm a bird who has come to find some friends. Do you know what bird am I? Is it a parrot? No, sadly no. Is it a sparrow? Hmm, no, not a sparrow too. Okay, never mind. You will learn about me later. Hi. Good day, everybody. We have now come to the series called Latte Palate. And today, I am with you, Kaleimadi Irene George, and I'm going to have these two trainees from IPG Campus Bahasa Antarabangsa Kuala Lumpur. And today, you are going to learn how to use poetry in the classroom. And this is for language arts in the primary English language classroom. I'm sure you all have done poems in your classroom, right? Because I mean, yeah. And we have, and Aisha, we have two of my trainees here who would introduce themselves. My name is Ahmad Kuzami bin Abdul Manan and I am from IPG Campus Bahasa Antarabangsa. My name is Aisha Afika binti Ibrahim. I am from IPG Campus Bahasa Antarabangsa. Today we are going to see how we are going to use poetry in the classroom. There are so many ways to actually use poetry in the language classroom. All right. Now, why are we using poetry in the classroom? To make it more interesting for exactly. the students. Exactly. Yes, Aisha. Uh, to teach the students about the moral in the poetry. Yes, exactly. And many, many other reasons. Okay. Since we are looking at activities, all right, to explore and exploit poetry in the ESL classroom. Let's see. Before we go into actual poems, I'm sure you all grew up listening to many nursery rhymes, right? Yes, if you all had gone, if you guys had gone for to uh, preschools, definitely you all would have done a lot of uh, nursery rhymes. Okay, Aisha, can you remember any nursery rhymes or not? from your preschool, from your tadika. Baba Black Sheep. Wow, and you still can remember the nursery rhyme, right? What about you, Kuzaimi? Humpty Dumpty. Very good. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Okay, wall, fall. And you can still remember that. Yes, Aisha, you too. I'm sure you can remember Baba Black Sheep too, very well. And because of the sounds they made, and because they all had some funny things, some funny incidents there, but there are also some of the nursery rhymes which can actually take a lot of feelings out from us, right? But we try to make it very happy because we want our kids to enjoy, right? Enjoy their uh, young, their childhood and all that. Okay. For most of us, nursery rhymes were the first poems we read, right? As I was telling, you can still remember. You did a lot of them in your tadika, right? Uh, if you are talking about an activity to make them, you know, be very happy and to include them to do something with the nursery rhyme. So you, for example, after teaching them the nursery, what you could do is uh, you could stack up some nice blocks on the wall, okay, like that, and then you can have one block, ba, ba, black, sheep, four blocks. Then the next line, you don't give them the blocks. They have to pick which block to put next. And then they go on doing that. See, very simple. And your kids will enjoy doing that. I'm sure many teachers out there are also trying their best to include poetry and nursery rhymes in their classroom, right? This is one of the thousand of ways to actually bring so much of joy and fun in your primary classroom. Okay, kids will get a lot of fun doing all this, okay? Now, you can even ask your kids, to knock down the wall and then to rearrange. You don't have to bother asking them because they'll have a real kick doing that, yeah? They always like to do these kind of things, right? Okay. Earlier, we were talking about nursery rhymes. What about poetry, all right? So, we ask you to read a poem. It's not going to be the same, okay? Kuzaimi might not read the same as me, all right? Okay, you might not read the same as 
Kuzaimi. So everybody has his own way of reading a poem. But when you read, you have a lot of ways to read okay, a poem. Okay. Because and poetry is all about reading aloud. When you read a poetry, a poem aloud, you get a lot of good feelings because of the beats in a poetry. Okay, for also even a poem if you're reading it, okay? And you can experiment with that idea by having kids read poems out loud in a variety of ways, okay? For example, you take a poem which is very sad, sad poem, but you ask them to read in a silly voice. You know how fun that would be? Reading a sad poem in a silly voice or a funny poem, but you read them in a scared voice. See how much of fun is going to be in the classroom when you do that. So you need to try out all these when you go to school as teachers. And uh, haiku is another poem that you can introduce in your classroom. Kids will love that. Okay, it's very simple. And where is haiku from, Kuzami? Japan. Ah, it's from Japan. And it is based on syllables. Okay, all right. So there are three lines in a haiku. And the first line has how many syllables, Aisha? Five. Okay, five. And then second line, seven five. and five. Very good. Simple. But first, you must always show your kids how to come out with a syllable, with a haiku. With a haiku. Show them a sample, okay? I'm going to show you a very simple way of writing a haiku. You can use your hand. You can tell your kids to use your hand. Just to remember haiku, how many lines, how many syllables and all. So what you can do is, you can actually have this traced out on a piece of white paper or even a colored paper, no problem. Okay, now why for your hand? So that you remember haiku starts with five lines and then seven, second line. And five lines, okay? Right. I will show you some samples of using them in the classroom. You also can actually go about and find. You can Google them. Your kids are so good with this technology. They can Google and they can also come up. But they can remember using these, all right? So normally it's about the environment, okay? For example, if they want to write about Rainy days. If your haiku is about rainy days, then the first line would have words with five syllables. Okay? And then second line, seven syll syllables, all about rainy days. Very simple. Okay? Right. Never mind. We are not going to tell, talk so much about how to write poems and all, because the idea of having this language arts class today is to teach teach us on how to use a poem in their language classroom. We don't need to teach your kids reading, listening, speaking, all right, or grammar or vocabulary only from text, okay? We can also bring in the poems and use the poems to actually do a reading lesson or do a listening and speaking lesson. But I'm telling you for language arts, you can do all the skills there. And at the end, you can get them to do a very nice craft. Okay. Okay, later I will ask you, can you guess what craft we are going to do later? The bird mask. Ah, very nice. Yes, I'm sure you want to go back home today. You tell your kids, do you want to go back home today with a mask like this? Then you get them to do a mask like this. Okay, right. So, wait for a while. In a few minutes, we will return and tell you what we have in store for you. Okay, hang on there. Welcome back, viewers. Okay, now. We are going to get them to read a poem, okay? And how to deal with a poem in the classroom, okay? Very simple. And we have a poem called Woodpecker. 
I'm sure you all are familiar with it. Okay, this is used for a year four, all right, under the contemporary literatures, this genre of poem we have here. Okay, maybe Kuzami, you can read. Let's hear Kuzami read the woodpecker poem. Woodpecker, woodpecker, tapping on the tree. Woodpecker, woodpecker, can't you see? Woodpecker, woodpecker, you can't win. You can knock all day, but there's no one in. Very good. Okay, now I want to hear Aisha reading it. Thank you, Kuzami. Woodpecker, woodpecker, tapping on the tree. Woodpecker, woodpecker, can't you see? Woodpecker, woodpecker, you can't win. You can knock all day, but there's no one in. Thank you, Aisha. See? All right. Every person will read the poem in, yeah, in his own way, in her own way. Okay? Welcome that. Encourage kids to read. Let them read. Okay? And the first step would be actually to get the kids to read on their own. All right? If they don't know how to pronounce or they don't know how to read, no problem. Just let them go through the poem. Let them read first. And then the teacher gets it. The teacher will teach them how to pronounce every word. Woodpecker. Woodpecker. Everyone say after me. Woodpecker. Woodpecker. Ah, something like that. So you can do all this in the classroom. I'm sure every teacher is doing this. All right. You would be there to assist your kids to show them how to pronounce words from the poem. So the teacher runs through the poem one time or two times and get them to repeat after the teacher. Okay. Woodpecker, woodpecker, tapping on the tree. You can even ask your kids after they read. We can even tell them to tap the hands while they are reading. For example, wood. Woodpecker, woodpecker. I'm sure they like it. All right. Sometimes you can even ask them to stamp their feet. Okay. Woodpecker, woodpecker, tapping on the tree. Woodpecker, woodpecker, tapping on the tree. Fun, right? And they can remember the poem very well. So you have done with teaching them how to read. Can you all remember? These are the things that you do in the classroom. Okay. Right. So some other things would be highlighting some of the words to get them to understand the poem. For example, you want them to know, what is this poem about? Then you start asking them questions. Is the woodpecker at another place? Is someone talking to the woodpecker? Who do you think is the person asking this question? Woodpecker, woodpecker, tapping on the tree. Woodpecker, woodpecker. Can't you see? Who do you think is talking? Is it, is it someone talking? And what do we call that voice or that someone talking when they ask? Guzami? The persona. Okay, very good. That is the persona. Yes. Ah, so we say that is the persona. It could be another bird. It could be you asking the woodpecker. So you can tell your kids. Imagine you see a woodpecker by the tree. Okay, all of you. Look. Maybe you can see a woodpecker at the tree. Let's see the trees in front of you. Imagine. Okay, let's see. All right. So ask them to imagine and talk to the woodpecker. And you can even ask them to ask other questions. So you can tell them. So you are teaching them to understand the poem. You taught them how to read the poem. Now you're teaching them the comprehension of the poem. You're teaching them to, to comprehend the poem to understand what the poem is about. So, you are teaching them two things. One, you are teaching them to read the poem with the right pronunciation and intonation. You are also teaching them to understand the poem. So, that's all that you do. All right? Now, uh, before we go into what I want you to do today is definitely something very interesting that I promised before this. Okay? So, viewers, Let's see what I want them to do. And after this, we will come back again to see what they all have to do.
welcome back viewers we are now in the final part of our latte for latte okay right kuzami and aisha now remember i told you i'm going to get you to do something very interesting towards the end what do you think is that kuzami do we need to read the poem yeah of course you need to read the poem definitely what about you aisha action song mm action songs i'm sure you all love to do all that right but you are going to do that and before you do that i'm going to ask you to do a mask remember i came out with a bird mask yeah so you are also going to do a bird mask but in your class there won't be enough time so remember you teachers can provide your kids with templates all right yes teachers don't give them to do a mask all by themselves you can give them templates to work on and let them color let them put on some decorative items you can ask them to bring them from home all right a, class, a day before your class you can tell them about all this so when you give them all this to do they can work on it and let them be proud of it okay all right give them probably a template of even a beak and after coloring they can draw and attach it to their nose they can use a rubber all right a rubber hoop to go over their ears and i think now it's not very difficult thing with all the mask and all i'm sure they all are used to all these things okay and get the pupils to actually use them for their action songs and for them to recite the poem okay right or uh, i'm sure you all can now both of you can come up with your own mask now okay right because next time in class you are also going to bring in a mask and show your kids this is a mask of a bird and all that okay right get going okay uh, viewers we will give them some time to come up with their mask now okay let's see That's so lovely. Okay, Aisha, why don't you put it over your face so that we see how it goes? Wow, that's so beautiful. Yeah, I uh, just put it like that on on top. Yeah, and we see how. Wow, okay, yeah, right. See the woodpecker. Okay, yeah, that's nice. Never mind, just try it on. Okay, Kuzami, what have we got here? Wow, wow, yours is. very nice too and you really walk about with that oh my god your kids would be so happy and excited right to do all this okay right so ladies and gentlemen teachers out there you see a language arts class so uh, most of the time sometime most of the time teachers will be like thinking of what they can do you know to carry out a poem in the classroom and all i see you have so many things done in one lesson right Uh, you learnt about the woodpecker because you asked them so many questions, and that you have actually embedded your cross curricular elements inside. That is element merentasi curriculum. You have to embed that in your classroom. When you asked about using just that poem, you talked about the word, the woodpecker, and you can even use this deeper this poem in your classroom by going into grammar. For example, one woodpecker, many woodpeckers. two woodpeckers you are already teaching them singular and plural you don't have to just have a special class for grammar this is how you do it and then you get them to actually uh, enjoy by reading the poem and after that they do a mask very simple and then they wear the mask and they read the poem okay so you can get your kids all come in front with all the various types of masks come in front when they wear mask they won't be very shy because they're using mask ah they can do whatever behind the mask but they can come in front and they can say the poem teachers out there this is one of the ways you can introduce or use all right a poem in the classroom and this is language arts okay this is language arts you can do so many things with one poem in the classroom besides teaching only the language you also teach the arts 
Okay, right. I hope I've made it very clear to all of you out there. And I know teachers, you are doing a lot of good things, all right, for our, for our nation, right? So continue doing that. And it was really wonderful to have you all in our program today. And to Aisha and Kuzami, thank you very much. And with that, I end my lesson. Thank you very much. Thank you.